So you'll want a mixture of shelving, hanging, you might include the pegging or the horizontal system, folding, stacking, dumping. Um, when I think of dumping, I think of socks or underwear or, or um, nail polish, things that are a low cost in case they do walk away. Um, especially if they're very colorful, they can, they can be very attractive in, in a dumping situation. As you're setting up your store, you want to keep in mind that customers are going to be looking sideways um, from the path as they walk through the store. You want to use 45 degree angles whenever possible so that it takes up less space. You can put in more merchandise and it's what people are used to. You also want to include color bands. So if you have a variety of t-shirts, um, if you gather them together by color or in addition to by size or instead of by size, it can be a strong attention grabber. Point of sale displays, as I mentioned before, um, lots of options and you want to keep them easy to see through or easy to see over because your people are going to be busy helping people cash out but you also have to look for security for your store and you wouldn't want to block your visual awareness of what's going on around your salesperson. Props can make such a difference in your visual merchandising. Fall is here, or at least almost here. And you can put a scarf up as part of a display. Okay, that looks nice. What if you put some leaves and maybe a branch behind it and brought in that feeling of fall through color in addition to that scarf? It's really going to tie in that mood and make that display much more effective. So you can use those higher areas that you can't say, hey, reach way up here and grab a shirt. You can use those areas as a marketing tool. And that way you're not asking people to be unsafe as they're getting their inventory or their items. Your storefront is just as important as inside your store. It needs to be clean. It needs to give an idea of what's inside without looking cluttered or messy. You need to consider your lighting. Check out your competition. See what they do for lighting in color, sound, scent. The most miserable place I know of to shop as far as scent is concerned and sound is, oh, what is Abercrombie and Fitch or Finch or whatever the heck it is, um, in the mall. They blast music really loud. They have so much scent that it just chokes me. But I have to realize I'm not their target market. Does the sound and scent attract the customer demographic that they're trying to reach? Since their sales are doing well, I'm assuming that's a yes. So looking at your customer demographic, and we'll get more into demographics in the future, you'll make those visual lighting, color, sound, scent decisions based on your targeted audience. As you create your visual communications and, and all of the signage for your store externally and internally. Make sure it all ties together and maintains your identity. You use those signs in a variety of ways. You let the, the customer know that you're there. You use signs and graphics as props to showcase merchandise. But you do want to keep your, your signs fresh. You don't want to use the same thing over and over and over. You don't want too much word, too, too much um, copy on a sign. You, you want the, the words to stand out. You want them to be able to be read. Nothing, um, no heavy cursive writing or anything too difficult to read. Try and create theatrical effects with your displays. Use your signage and, and color and merchandise together to, to make something that grabs attention. It, it makes it fun. As we mentioned before, lighting is an important element in a store. It can make a mood or break a mood. If it's too bright, 
then people can feel put out or put off. If it's too dark, it's hard for them to connect with your merchandise. So it it's important that you find that happy medium that works for your store. Same thing with color. Really depends on the feel that you're trying to create. Sound and scent, the same. So this is the breakdown. Um, I have the research information, but it was too long to fit on the slide. It made the text too small. Uh, if you'd like the research information, I can get it for you. But percentage of Americans and when they shop at any given time during the day. So you can pretty much expect that afternoon and evening are going to be the more busy time frames. And I do notice that quite a few businesses are closed in Twin Falls and surrounding areas on Sunday. So you'll want to consider, you might want to stay open. It might create a marketing opportunity for you where you don't have competition in play. You know, not necessarily for the store that you're working on for this class, because I've given you a specific size to work with, but should you decide that you want to open a retail store, you need to decide how much square footage you need. So the first thing you have to do is decide what you're going to open. So in this case, as an example, we're opening a bookstore. You determine how much books cost wholesale, how much you need to sell in order to cover your general costs, including paying yourself a comfortable salary, um, paying your employees, your taxes, etc., and all of your overhead. And in this case, you come up with a general idea of $250,000 per year in sales. So you need to sell a quarter of a million dollars in books in order to meet your, your and pay your bills. So the, set, the average sales per square foot for a bookstore, and it's an approximate, is $150 per square foot that you need to sell. So you divide their sales volume by the square foot, and that gives you your selling space. So you need 1,666 square feet of selling space for your bookstore in order to be able to meet your sales goal. Now that's, the, the sales square foot does not include any office areas, break rooms, storage areas, bathrooms, hallways, aisles, display areas, anything not used for sales. So that 1,666 square feet quickly turns into about 2,500 to 3,000 square feet minimum in order for that bookstore to hopefully be successful. Now, once again, this is a picture of your storefront, and you're looking at the small stores um, in front of that little white car, the two stores, and you're looking at approximately 2,800 square feet. Each side is approximately 1,400 square feet, and there is a firewall. Um, also, it is a load-bearing wall, so it has to stay in place between the two stores. But you can knock holes in them um, so, um, so that, um, and have them as open doorways to be able to get through to both sides, because I'm assuming you're going to want to use both sides. And at 2,893 square feet total, they're listing it at $14 per square foot, which makes it about $40,500 per year or about $33.75 per month. That is offered at triple net, so you can pretty much anticipate it's going to go up to about $18, which would make it about $4,300 per month. You can negotiate new carpet, paint, tear out walls, get it back to a white box, also known as a vanilla box, so that as you are coming up with your concept, you're not having to destroy what was there before. You can just start building from your own. After we looked at the two locations, we went over to the yogurt store and we determined that they um, 